Alright, what's going on guys? Ted from Nerd American here, and I'm back with another episode of It Builds Character. Uh, tonight, again, also, uh, be sure to let me know if the audio is too loud with the music. I think I've got it tuned in to a good spot at the moment. Uh, but just let me know if I sound too soft, if the music sounds too loud. Um, because I really have no way of knowing unless you guys tell me. So, uh, tonight we are going to be building Samurai Jack from the titular series Samurai Jack. Um, this was requested on YouTube by username TL Hakan, I don't know how you pronounce it. Sorry, I probably butchered that. But we are here to build Jack. Uh, full stop, I will be up front. I unfortunately did not get around to, just because I didn't have access to it on TV, I will, I do plan to go back to see it. I have not seen the most, the final season of Samurai Jack. I'm very familiar, uh, with Samurai Jack seasons one through four, the original run on Cartoon Network. I watched it all the way through, um, when it was on the air, uh, and then I watched it again, actually, earlier this year, uh, as it was all on Hulu, I think, so I watched all of it. So seasons one through four, Jack, I'm very familiar with. That being said, that's going to be the Jack that I'm building today, because that's the Jack that I know. So, uh, all right, so what are we going to talk about about Jack? Jack is a human, right? No questions there. I mean, potential questions, depending on what you think about the future Jack. But Jack is a human. So here's the breakout of the stats. Uh, now... I put this breakout this way, and I'll explain why. Again, a lot more of you have joined the channel recently, having seen the giveaway or made your way to me one way or another. Uh, and that's awesome. I love having everybody here. The more people here, the merrier. That's the more ideas I get, the more commenters in stream, the more fun it makes it for everybody. So I guess because it's been a little while and some of you guys were new commenting on the last video about Groot, which is great. I love hearing your constructive criticism, why you think Groot shouldn't be a half-orc, he should be an Earth Genazi, why you think he should be this and not that. Great. I want to hear this stuff. That's why I encourage you people, uh, uh, you guys that are, are sending these comments, to come out to the live streams of it so you can help influence what happens and what ends up in the final build uh, by being here in the chat to to change things, to, to give me comments and and sell your case as to why you think it should be A and not B. So this is how I've broken down Jack currently. I've given him 8 strength, uh, 15 dex, 14 con, 12 intelligence, 13 wisdom, and 10 charisma. Problem is, with Jack, is Jack is amazing at everything, right? If you recall the original kind of montage episodes of him as a child... He trained under the best masters in everything from archery to scholarly learning to hunting, tracking, hand-to-hand -hand combat, weapon combat of any kind. You know, he has all of these amazing things. Uh, so it's hard to really, again, build that and a functional 5th edition character unless you roll stats and you roll very well, which you obviously can do, but for the sakes of not having to deal with rolling stats at the start of every stream and extending the length of it and then potentially making one character more powerful than the other we've been just using standard array standard array over point by because point by requires just more steps to make things get there so standard array is easier so that's what we're going to go with and that's what we have gone with so jack is relatively hardy he's able to put up with a lot he is i mean 12 is probably a discredit to his intelligence as he is very smart um He's also very wise in the traditional sense of wisdom, but he's also good at tracking, at reading people, um, and at observing things, all of which are keyed off of wisdom in Dungeons & Dragons. Uh, he is strong, but he is more... I mean, he wields a katana, right? It's a magic sword. So he gets by uh, more on his finesse abilities than he does on his physical strength. While he is strong... And we've seen him grow strong in certain aspects over time. I'm going to build him dex-based because it'll fit more into the overall build that I have planned. So, I just wanted to spell that out up front. Um, and, 
Yeah, he's basically got uh, just about everything. Um, so. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, uh, DJ, there's going to be some Kensai Monk in here for sure. Um, just because it fits. Also because he was, he was kind of Monk-esque in his initial training um, before he kind of took the weapon training, he was sort of an act. I'm making him an acolyte as his background. He's going to be a multi-class. He's going to be a multi-class. We'll talk about that in just a sec. So, first of all, he's going to get a plus one to two stats. So we're going to give him 16 dex. We're going to give him 14 wisdom. Right out the gate. So here's where we're at. 8, 16, 14, 12, 14, 10. So, uh, what else are we going to give Jack? He gets a feat at level 1. For us, go down here and add this, because he's a variant human, because why would you not be a variant human if the opportunity is uh, proposed? Uh, he's always... You'll also find that a lot of the characters that people ask me to build turn out to be humans. So, variant human is a way for me to explain away a lot of things. The easiest way to explain something that, uh... It's hard to explain is to just be like, and they have the lucky feet. That's how I explained away a lot of the stuff with Captain Jack Sparrow by just saying that he's got the lucky feet. Um, but for Jack, I'm actually going to give him a Xanathar's feet. So we're actually going to go um, here, which I should have prepped and I forgot to do so. So forgive me. Uh, we're gonna go with, as I click through here a couple times, to get to Xanathar's, where is it, racial feats, somewhere around here, there we go. Jack is gonna get the human feat prodigy, as I feel like that actually fits Jack quite well. It doesn't affect his stats at all, but it affects him and who he is. So he gains skill proficiency of his choice, one tool proficiency of his choice, and fluency in a language of his choice. The languages aren't so important here in uh, It Builds Characters. We tend to just ignore the language portion of things. But Jack is multilingual, so and he, he, he's got many, many languages, he knows, and he seems to be a quick study in languages in general. So we're going to go ahead and put down here Prodigy. And then, there we go. So, Jack's going to get a couple. He gets a skill proficiency for being a human. And then a skill proficiency from Prodigy. So, we're going to give him... Let's see. Because he's going to get some from his background and stuff. So, why don't we grab that too? Because he's an Acolyte. That's what I'm saying he's going to be. So, he's going to get Insight and Religion from his background. Insight and religion. That's fine. I'm okay with that. Then, let's see. We'll give him perception. And acrobatics. I think those are reasonable for Jack. Um, and then he gets expertise. In well, he gets a tool proficiency. All right, or is it? Yeah, tool proficiency. Um, survival is a good one for him. I think we're gonna get that via our class, but I will double check if he doesn't get that. So we're gonna start him as a monk. Let's just see. Do monks get the option for survival? They don't. Okay, so we will actually give him survival then, because he can get acrobatics from being a monk. So there we go. He's got survival. Um, so that works out. He gets expertise in a... I want to give him expertise in survival. Because he just literally wanders everywhere in the whole first season. Yes, and I was... Uh, that's what we were actually going to give him. I was either going to give him a sewing kit or proficiency in like basket weaving tools. Because he, he always weaves new hats. He always loses his hat and he weaves a new hat like every episode or has a new hat every episode 
So I'm okay with giving him the sewing kit as part of that, and he's gonna have expertise in uh, in survival. Uh, he's gonna be a 12th level character, so his proficiency bonus is gonna be four. Um, and then we will move on. So, uh, let's see here. So we're gonna start Jack as a monk because I said so. So he's gonna get strength and dex proficiencies. Uh, and then he's gonna get two from acrobatics, athletics, uh, history, and actually he gets another type of artisan tools for being a monk. So sewing kit and a uh, hat weaving kit. Those are his tool proficiencies. Um, and then he gets acrobatics. And he gets one more. I'm gonna give him stealth because he does. He is like a master of ninjutsu as well. So we're gonna give him stealth. So um, for being a monk, what does he get? Let's zoom ourselves out here so it's easier to see. So he's gonna get unarmored defense, which is gonna be dex plus wisdom. So his armor class currently is uh, what is that? A three. And a uh, 2, so his armor class is currently 16. That's going to change. Uh, then he's going to get Martial Arts. Um, so I'm going to say... Uh, martial Arts. Dex instead of Strength. For Monk Weapons. Uh... Unarmed strike as a bonus action. Um, mm, oh yeah. Uh, that's true. We if we have if we have space for the skilled feat, we may throw in the skilled feat. Um. But I just like... Prodigy's a new feat, too, so I'm a little biased towards new things because we just got them in Xanathar's. Uh, so I'm a little biased that way. But I feel like Prodigy fits Jack. He was he did excel at literally everything he trained in, so I think I think it's a good fit. Um, arm strike equals... Maybe four. So we'll go ahead and put on arm strike here. And we'll come back to that. Then he's going to get key points. I'll go key points. I'm going to give Jack four because he's going to be a fourth level monk so he can get an ability score here. Like four. His fourth level ability score is going to go to dexterity, so this is going to go up to 18. We'll come back to that though. So, what could he do with his key points? He can flurry, he can patient defense, and he can step out of the wind. So, flurry of blows, one key point for two, uh, bonus action, arm strikes, uh, patient defense, one key point, uh, take the dodge action, Win. One key point. Is it just dash or disengage? Disengage or dash. Um, disengage or dash. So bonus action. And he's also going to get uh, unarmored movement. So his movement speed is going to increase by 10. So he's already up to 40 feet of movement. Or is it by 5? Yeah, it is 10, right? 10, yeah. So, okay. So that works out well. Um, then uh, he's going to get deflect missiles. Deflect. Deflect missiles. Roll. Uh, this is a reaction. Roll 1d10 plus dex plus... Monk level to reduce damage of a ranged 
attack event amount if reduced to zero it can be caught and thrown back as a uh, key point. And yes, to your point from earlier, DJ, he is going to be, oops, where are we here? A, did I miss it? There you go, Ken Saimok. So what does he get at third? He gets proficiency uh, in the calligraphy tools, which is also a very Jack thing. So um, we've got a, uh, Calligraphy tools. Very, very Samurai Jack. Uh, then... Oops, damn it, I keep clicking the wrong things. He's going to get uh, Kensai weapons. Choose two weapons to be your Kensai weapons. Each one can be simple or martial. Um, oh, no, I think I know. Uh, I knew it was coming when you said it. Uh, Kensai weapons... We've got, uh, I'm gonna go with long sword, parentheses, katana, and a long bow, as he has used a bow in several episodes. Long bow. Uh, katana. So those are his Kensai weapons. And that means for him, uh, Kensai weapons, he can use dex instead of uh, strength for those weapons. Uh, then he can also, um, he's got agile parry. Agile parry. If uh, he makes an unarmed strike. As part of a, as part of the attack action, his AC increases by two. He also has whatever the thing is where you add Kensai shot. Uh, Kensai with an E. It is with an E. Oh, there you go. I mean, I've seen, there's a ton of things out there that say how to use, a lot of people's homebrews katanas are just finesse longswords, or they try to make them, like, amazingly powerful things. It's been asked before, what do you do for a katana, and everybody says, like, the general rule from wizards is just, it's a longsword, it's just reskinned, meaning it is a longsword. So it can be wielded one-handed to do a D8 or two-handed to do a D10. Um, and in this case, it being a Kensai weapon lets him use it as... Uh, using his dex rather than his strength. Um, so Kensai shot. This is like a bonus action. Add 1D4 to ranged weapon attacks. I think. I could be wrong. Let's check. Uh, you can use a bonus action to make ranged weapon attacks with the Kensai weapon more deadly. When you do so, any target you hit with a ranged weapon attack using a Kensai weapon takes an extra 1d4 damage of the weapon's type, uh, for that current turn. Cool. So, that is his monk stuff that we're gonna give him. Oh, and then he's gonna actually, he's gonna get at level 4 for monk. Slow fall. This is, got it, 20 feet. Five times your monk level, yeah. Slow fall, 20 feet. Okay, so that is Jack at the current. This has already gone up to 17. So that's Jack, what I'm going to call Jack in his early days. Then we're going to say, as he started to train and become a samurai, he's going to be a fighter. Uh, oh, yes. Xanathar's Guide is 100% a published source book for 5th edition. Um, there is literally 
so many videos of it out on my channel at the current xanathar's guide is their current released source book it i think should be out it's out to the general public now so everything in there is 100 percent fifth edition um like again to the point where if you play in adventurers league which not everybody does and that's totally cool well i'm just saying with adventurers league that is sort of my judge on whether things are you know legal because the adventure league is their organized play so if they allow something in adventurers league it's more or less safe to say that it's officially deemed okay as part of the game um yeah so uh so if if it's allowed in those then it's good to go and yes dj to your point yeah uh monk kensai kind of fits um I think later in the year, I have uh, Rurouni Kenshin, or Hemora Kenshin from the series Rurouni Kenshin. Um, that's going to be tricky as well. He, it's hard to say for him, he may be, she's may either be straight uh, samurai or straight monk. Kenshin's a lot more acrobatic than Jack in, in his fighting styles, but we'll see. We're getting ahead of ourselves. So he's an 8th level samurai. So what do we get for, let's go over to fighter, because we just added eight fighter levels. So what do we get for that? So again, our health is going to change, so I have to do health separately. So he's going to get a fighting style for this. We're going to give him the dueling fighting style, I guess. It's tricky, because Jack fights, when Jack fights with his sword... He fights. He fights mostly. He fights. Does he fight mostly two-handed? I'm trying to remember. Is it like wielding a katana with two hands, or is he more a single, like a typical katana one, you know, one-handed? Because that would change whether we use defense, uh, or, or I'm sorry, whether we take dueling or great weapon fighting. Let's go with dueling. Is you think? Yeah, I guess he does use it more two-handed. Yeah, and when I, I'm thinking back to a lot of the images, I recall him more like whoosh, 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 with two hands. Uh, all right, so we're gonna give him great weapon fighting. Yeah, yeah. All right, so that's fine. That doesn't really change much. It's just whether what his fighting style is. So great weapon fighting. Uh, Reroll ones and twos on damage dice. Um, that's easy. Then he's going to get second wind, bonus action, uh, heal, 1d10 plus fighter level HP, action surge, um, cool, that's all that. Then he's going to be a samurai as his fighter archetype. So we're going to go here to the samurai fighter. So what does he get? Two more skill proficiencies. History, insight, performance, persuasion. Alternatively, you can learn a language of your choice. So looking at this, we're going to either go... We could choose... Because of the way 5th edition works, as you never lose out on skill proficiencies. So we could take ones that he already has to then give him ones that he doesn't have. Uh, so, um, Jack would have history, I'd say, but he's so far removed from time. We're basically just going to choose ones that he already has, like Insight... Actually, no, I'm sorry, we can only get one. So we can choose Insight to get one that we want. And then we either get the option of History, Performance, or Persuasion. Uh, it's tricky, because Jack, like, Medicine is a thing that Jack definitely has. Uh, and Nature probably as well. He also is a pretty good, like, he's really good with animals. So animal handling would also not be a bad thing for Jack to have. Um, and then basically we get the option of persuasion or history. Uh, yeah, I'll give him persuasion. Oh, I think that makes sense. So that's one. And we have one more to put wherever we want. Um, 
Yeah, so I think it's sort of a toss-up between uh, medicine, nature, and animal handling for Jack. Hmm. Hmm. I think he makes more... E I think I'm going to go probably with medicine. As medicine seems to be one that he uses more frequently than he does... Like I mean, he works with animals and he's in nature... But he seems to make a lot of like herbal teas and things like that that have medicinal benefits. So I'm going to go with medicine. And apparently it comes into play in season five. Oops, so we'll go with medicine. That's fine. So, oops, I clicked out of the thing again like I always do. So, medicine. Then he's going to get fighting spirit at level three. So we're going to go here and we're going to put on the second page. We've got... Down here, fighting spirit uh, three times per long rest, which still bothers me that it's long rest and not short rest because he's a fighter. But basically, unfortunately, um, he is not going to hit the higher level tiers. But basically, as a bonus action, bonus action on his turn. Gain advantage on all attack rolls and gain five temporary hit points. So, bonus action. Advantage on all weapon attacks. Ah, see, that's the problem. All weapon attack rolls until the end of that current turn. When you do so, you also gain five temporary hit points three times per long rest. Then at 7th level, oh, actually, I guess we should go back here. Um, oops, I clicked out of all of the things. Oops. Man, here we go. So uh, at 4th level, he'll get another ability score improvement. So we're going to put his dexterity at 20. Then he's going to get, at 5th level, he's going to get extra attack. Then... At 6th level, he's going to get another ability score improvement, which I think we're going to give that to Constitution, give him a little bit of a health boost. Uh, Alright, then at 7, he's going to get another character ability. He's going to get Elegant Courtier. Your discipline and attention, whenever you make a persuasion check, add your wisdom modifier to it so i'm gonna go elegant courtier add wismod to persuasion checks proficiency in wiz saves so we also gave him plus two decks Dex, to con. All right, and I think the other thing is proficiency in wisdom saving throws. Yeah, exactly. So that works out, and he's going to get proficiency in wisdom saves, which is big for him. Um, and then, yeah, at eight, he's going to get another ability score improvement, and I think we're going to bump his wisdom up to 16. So... Let's see where that puts us now. We've got that. Elegant Courtier. We did a plus two wisdom. So he is more... He's not as well-rounded as Jack in the show. But he's more well-rounded. Right? Like, this puts him a little bit better. So this is a minus one. This is a five. Three. One. Three. Zero. So we've got three... Nine, three, one, seven, zero. This is going to be nine, uh, three, one, negative one, zero, one. Insight's going to be a seven, zero, one. Yeah, so proficiency in. Medicine's going to give him a 7 there. That's not so bad. Perception will give him another 7. 
performance is a zero. Persuasion is going to be four, which she yeah, is now going to be end up being a seven, which is pretty good. Religion is a five. Sleight of hand is a five. Stealth is a nine, and survival is a seven. Uh, not too shabby. And we're looking at a uh, seventeen passive perception. We've got an 18 AC from our monk abilities combined together. We've got a five to our initiative, which that's not so bad. Um, his longbow is gonna use dex, so that's gonna be nine. His unarmed strikes also attacks are gonna be nine. His katana is also gonna be, we're gonna make that magic, but this is gonna be 1d8 plus five. Uh, this is going to be 1d4 plus 5, and the katana is going to be, we're going to say because he's going to wield it, uh, 1d10 plus 5. We're, again, we're going to come back and change that. Um, let's see here. Just want to make sure. Oh, wait, we gave him expertise in survival. So this is actually going to be uh, 11. So he's very good at survival. Uh, that's pretty good all the way around, I'd say. Fairly well-rounded. So let's do a quick calculation on his HP because it's gonna, it's a little tricky because it's gonna combine a couple. So it's gonna be, let's see, nine times eight. So we got 72 plus five and three is eight. Eight, 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 plus eleven. So, hundred and seven hit points total. Um, so that's pretty good all, uh, all the way, all the way around there. Um, so first of all, Jack's sword is a magic sword. It's a legendary sword forged by gods, essentially. Um, I think it was Odin. Ra and Vishnu uh, all work together to form his sword. So this is clearly a plus three sword, right? I don't think there's anybody's going to make an argument that it's not. So it's going to be plus three. So we're going to go down here, Katana. Um, plus three. Long sword. Um... We might give it some other abilities. But if we take a look at what he can do just as of right now, without adding in any other magic things or any of his other crazy abilities that he has, he's actually pretty solid, all things considered, right? So he's a monk. So his base AC currently is 18, which isn't bad considering he doesn't wear armor and he wields his weapon with two hands, not using his shield. I mean, yes, one could be like, oh, just give him bracers of defense and it puts his AC at 20. You're right. But I don't really recall Jack. Jack doesn't really wear bracers, right? He's got the wraps. It's not really his deal. So he can, his unarmed strikes do a D4 plus 5, which if you think that a regular person's would just do 1 point plus their dex mod or their strength mod, and that his does a D4 plus 5, kind of balances out a little bit his martial arts mastery and his ninjutsu mastery so that makes some sense um he can do a what he can do an unarmed strike as a bonus action so regardless he still has a bonus action used to punch somebody so he can attack twice with his sword and then punch somebody he also has key points so he could use those to do uh, a flurry of blows so attack twice with his extra attack and then punch twice with flurry of blows as a bonus action or he could use that to take the dodge action or to dash dash or disengage. His movement speed is also 40, so he's a little bit faster than your average person. He can deflect missiles uh, and potentially catch arrows and things and throw them back. Um, uh, the He can use uh, katanas and longbows as monk weapons. Um, the, the longbow as a monk weapon doesn't really factor in too much. But because it's a monk weapon, he can use Kensai Shot, so he can use a bonus action on his turn when he fires to have each one of his arrow shots do an additional d4 damage. Um, if he attacks with his fist, 
as part of his attack action. So he could like swing the sword and punch. His AC goes up by two for that turn. Um, he has great weapon fighting since he wields his sword with two hands. So he rerolls ones and twos on the damage dice. He has second wind, so he has a little bit of an extra heal if things go south. Uh, his action surge, so he can do a whole nother action. He gets the fighting spirit ability, which is unfortunate of the way that it works because it could be so much better for this build. Um, but basically, fighting spirit is three times per long rest as a bonus action on his turn. He can gain advantage on all attacks and gain five temporary hit points. So it gives him a little bit extra HP, and he gets advantage on all of his attacks. What would be better if there was some way to get a chance to do this and still do Flurry of Blows, so he could be doing two attacks with the sword, two punches, and still have access to Fighting Spirit, but unfortunately that there's just no way for that to really work out. Um, so, But anyway, he could Action Surge... Uh, and then attack four times. Four times attacking with advantage is no joke. Uh, he adds his wisdom modifier to his per uh, persuasion checks. Uh, and he is proficient in wisdom saving throws. So that makes explains the fact that he does have like supremely high willpower. And is seemingly able to withstand most kind of forms of mental assault. Uh, so I think that works there. And we gave him, oh, we gave him the sewing kit. A hat weaving kit. And calligraphy tools, um, which explains the way that he is always fixing his clothes and making new hats. And, uh, you know, he's very, uh, he, he's definitely a calligraphy type guy. Um, oh, uh, I guess we can go down here. And under here, we can just write, uh, jump good. Jack is constantly. Under the effects of the jump spell, this cannot be dispelled or suppressed by any means. I spelled suppressed wrong. Two piece. Um. I'm trying to think. Um, yeah. Uh, I think the sword is somewhat sentient because certain things make it to where he A never lost it and B it can refuse to be found. Yeah, I mean, again, that could be, you know, more potentially season five stuff that I'm a little unfamiliar with. Uh, but, you know, it's hard to add sentience to something when I, I don't know the full story. Um,. And I'm not really sure that the sentience would truly, like, what tangible benefit it would provide. It is definitely a plus three longsword. Absolutely. Um, that is something. Uh, I don't really know. I'm trying to think if there's anything else specifically that, like, I know his sword was forged, it's magic. Uh, but it's covered in the fact that it's plus three. Um, and, you know, it seems to do extra damage to Aku. Pretty, it's designed to destroy him. But I don't really know if that, like, translates well into, uh, you know, a fifth edition mechanic. It could potentially be like the Sunblade, which would just give it extra radiant damage. Um... I mean, my my go-to, uh, more often than not, for that is to just use the Mace of Disruption reskinned, which has been... I've reskinned the Mace of Disruption I don't know how many times in these videos, because it's probably... I You know what? I super love the Mace of Disruption. It's probably one of my favorite magic items, the more I think about it. I don't know why. There are way better magic items, but I just love the Mace of Disruption, and I just wish it wasn't a mace. Like, a long sword of disruption, or a bow of disruption, or a whip. A whip of disruption was what I did for Castlevania, uh, the very first episode, and I love that. So I'll show you Mace of Disruption real quick. And we could just make it a Mace of Disruption, but only against Aku. That might be the way to do it. 
functions as a Mace of Disruption against Aku. So a Mace of Disruption does an extra 2d6 radiant damage to fiends or undead. Um, uh, oh, we could look at that. Uh, if the target has 25 or fewer hit points, it must make a DC 15 wisdom saving throw or be destroyed. Uh, and then the sword, the sword, the, the mace sheds light, or in this case, the sword. I often use that reskinned. Um, well, I would just use the Mace of Disruption as the template, basically say it does an extra 2d6 radiant damage to Aku. Uh, and if Aku were to get within 25 hit points or fewer, he'd have to make a wisdom saving throw or be destroyed. Um, which I think is a reasonable thing. We can look at the sword. There is a sort of uh, vengeance, though, I believe. Um, we'll just look and see what it is, because, right, I mean, it's sort of built with that purpose. We'll take a look. I don't think it really fits Jack. I think it does a lot more, uh, oops, a lot more non-Jack-like things, but we'll look. Right, I mean, we got the time, so we'll take a look, see what it says. Sword of Vengeance. This is a cursed sword. This is a plus one sword. Uh, cursed, vengeful spirit, becoming attuned to it, extends the curse to you. You're unwilling to part with the sword, keeping it on your person at all times. So, so far, while attuned, you have disadvantage on attack rolls made with this weapon, with uh, weapons other than this one. In addition, while the sword is on your person, you must make a DC 15 wisdom saving throw whenever you take damage in combat. On a failed save, you attack the creature that damaged you until you drop to zero hit points. Uh, yeah... No, I'm going to skip on that. I get it. It kind of fits, but we're just going to skip on that one, unfortunately. So, yeah, we're going to go with my ever-popular uh, Mace of Disruption. So, we're going to go Katana plus three. Functions as a Mace of Disruption only against... Uh, which is basically the Sunblade does radiant damage. We'll just go and look at it. Instead of slashing damage, it does radiant damage. I think it does an extra D8, but only to undead. That's fine. We'll go look at it. Sunblade. Uh, it does radiant instead of slashing. It's a plus two weapon. When you hit an undead, it takes an extra D8 radiant, and that's it. And then it glows like sunlight. So that's cool, but I think the Mace of... Again, my go-to is if you can somehow convince... Or, like, I mean, if you're a DM, I think that this is also a really cool item. And I think, personal opinion, items that do extra damage to a type of creature are not that... I mean, especially if you're the DM gifting it to someone in, the, in your game, you know how relevant that type of thing is going to be, right? Like, if you give somebody a Mace of Disruption as per what it is... A Mace of Disruption does an extra 2d6 damage to fiends or undead. You know as the DM how many fiends or undead are going to be in your game. But, like, that's a cool weapon or cool item to gift to someone. But it doesn't necessarily always come into play. Like, it's a cool item and it does, you know, it's a magic item, right? But it doesn't come into play all the time. But when it does come into play, those players feel like champions when you bust out this sweet weapon that does, you know, extra damage to this type of creature. Like, they feel really good about it. Um, it's uh, similar, I guess, to the Dragon Slayer Longsword, or a Dragon Slayer Sword, right? Like, a Dragon Slayer Sword does an extra 3d6 damage to a dragon. Uh, the Giant Slayer Sword, or the Giant Slayer, I think it's typically an axe. Like, a Giant Slayer does an extra D8 damage to Giants, you know, whatever. Uh, these types of ideas, I think, are really cool items to gift. Uh, because, like I said, as the DM, you know whether this is going to be, like, really just screw you over as the DM by making them plow through everything. Or if it'll come up every so often enough to make it cool when it happens, but not, like, super OP. Uh, again, I prefer the Mace of Disruption, personal preference... Uh, but I think it's cool to reskin these things into non-traditional weapons, like a whip of disruption, or I think we made Hellboy's hand cannon, uh, the, uh, function as a mace of disruption or something like that, you know, that kind of a thing. 
Like a blowgun. A blowgun of disruption. Could you imagine? I think a blowgun does one point of damage. But one point of damage plus 2d6 radiant from range with no sound? Because it's a blowgun? It's not so bad, right? I mean, that's kind of it turns like a shitty thing you don't care about into something pretty damn cool. Like, who's got the blowgun? We're fighting a mummy. Quick. You know, that kind of a thing. Uh, but I'm way off topic. So let's dial it back in here. Uh, I think we're pretty much done here, guys. Uh, Jack is a uh, level 4 Kensai Monk, level 8 Fighter Samurai. I should make this fighter because Samurai is not a class in 5th edition. Um, it is a subclass. Um... Through his various abilities, we see he's got a decent unarmored AC of 18. He's got proficiency in strength, dex, and wisdom saves. He's got a handful of skills at his disposal, which is very cool. Uh, a couple of toolkits to round out his character. Uh, decent perception. He's got his magic katana. He's good with a bow, and he's got unarmed strikes. He's got key points to allow him to do extra attacks to dodge or to run extra fast. He's already faster than normal. Um, he can block uh, incoming attacks. He can catch them. Uh, he can parry with uh, with his blade to increase his AC. Deal extra damage on his ranged weapon attacks. He has two attacks. He rerolls ones and twos on damage dice for two-handed weapon attacks. Uh, he can heal a little bit with second wind. He has his samurai's fighting spirit to get a little bit of extra boost to HP, temporary HP, and uh, additional advantage on attacks. And uh, he adds his Wisdom modifier to Persuasion checks. Uh, he's got a plus three katana that uh, functions as a Mesa disruption uh, against Aku. And due to his training in the forest, he has Jump Good, where he's constantly under the effects of the Jump spell. Um, it's basically as the Jump spell, but not actually magic, because it was through uh, resistance training by carrying heavy rocks on his back. He learned to jump good. Not fly. Jump good. Um, so yeah, guys, that's pretty much it. I thank you all for coming out here to join me for this episode of It Builds Character number, was this 15, I think? Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at what we've got coming up. Uh, sh shit. Shrek. Oh, I think this has to... Did I not update this? Oh, it's still loading here. Shrek is the next character to build. Um, <laughs> yeah, you know, it's uh, it's crazy how sometimes we're packed in here, there's tons of people, and then other times there's basically no one around. Uh, my chat is very volatile like that. You get like a whole bunch of people, and then sometimes you get like three, so you never know. Um... I actually have to put in a space here because we're not actually going to be uh, recording next week as I will be on the Venture Maidens channel uh, playing in their season finale game. So that is very cool. So this is not going to change that date. Uh, and this is going to be off. We're going to say, where is this? Uh... Adventure Maidens. And then this is this. Uh, I will put in the link for Groot's uh, thing. It is up on YouTube. It came out earlier this morning. Uh, the build for Groot will go there. And then Samurai Jack, when it comes out later this week, it'll go there. That is not how you spell Maidens at all. Um, it will go in here. And then when we get back here on the 13th, I'll be building Shrek. Why? Because somebody asked me to, and that's how this show goes. You guys come up with an idea for something I should build in It Builds Character, I add it to the list, and then I build it. So, Shrek is next. Uh, yes, Shadzar, with Celeste, I will be playing in, uh, yes, Tank. Um, they're actually, they're live right now. That's where actually where I'm going once I end this stream. The Venture Maidens are live currently over on the Don't Split the Podcast Network channel. Um, they uh, This is their off week where they sort of do like an after hour show where they do sort of like a Dear Abby kind of you ask them questions and they answer questions 
in character as two maidens in one of uh, two like barmaids in one of the bars in the game. But yes, uh, she will be. Uh, this is the the venture maidens proper. The end of their season uh, of streaming um, for this season of the venture maidens tr like true cast is gonna be. Um, yeah, the talk show isn't always a thing. That's every other week. That's what's happening right now. Uh, next week, though, is the actual game proper where they play the game that I will be in uh, as a character that I'm still in the process of determining. So I will be there to assist them uh, in the season finale. Um, talk show, again, is every other week. Uh, that is their sort of off hours thing. So, all right. I've rambled for enough. Thank you again, everybody who came out in chat, especially to uh, Weird Guy with a Guitar and DJ who... We're here with me pretty much from the start, providing me feedback and uh, interest, interesting comments about uh, Jack as we built him. Um, and uh, again, also thanks to Shadzar here for showing up towards the end uh, to again reinvigorate the chat a bit. But um, I did want to thank you guys and let you again know if you're watching this on YouTube or Twitch after the fact... Uh, and you don't like the way I built Samurai Jack or the way I built certain characters, come to the live shows. Because this is where you guys, as you saw during this one, they made suggestions that they thought he should be this, he should have that, he should have this. And I take those, we debate them between me and the chat and the other folks in the chat. And then if, uh, if everybody agrees, that's what makes it into the final build. So if you have comments or concerns or critiques, come here, watch us live, and then be a part of it. So, um, <laughs> well, hey, some people like listening to my voice. Uh, I don't know why, uh, DJ. Um, <laughs> uh, but anyway, yeah, some people like to listen to the sound of my voice. I don't, but... Uh, that was people, when I used to do podcasts back in the day for Guild Wars 2, people were all about listening to me just talk about, well, mostly about Guild Wars 2, but you, you get the point. Anyway, um, so thank you guys. Uh, I'm going to wrap this up here. This will probably be out on YouTube in the next, for those of you watching live, in the next two to three days. Uh, I still have Tomb of Annihilation. Uh, I still basically have... Monday's Horde of the Dragon Queen episode to edit. Tuesday's Tomb of Annihilation episode to edit. Sunday's Curse of Strahd episode to edit. This, and then as well as the constant outpour of the uh, Xanathar's Guide to Everything content that will also be coming out. So, um, yeah. Hope you guys enjoyed it, and uh, I will see you on Monday for uh, the next episode of Princes of the Apocalypse. So... Uh, yeah, have a good night, everyone.